just one item I want to bring in that kind of ties into that work programme. It's an issue that came up here last week <coughs> with the Data Protection Commissioner, and it was a very useful meeting, the use of the public service card in her report, and we dealt with other financial matters also in relation to the Data Protection Commissioner. But um, I raised towards the end of the meeting the issue of where a person had an expired free travel card and they continued to use it, which they shouldn't have done and because um, the, the social welfare payment they were in receipt of had ceased. But the, the travel card wasn't cancelled, that part of it in the public service card, and they continued to use it. And after about three months, a couple of months on, the card was confiscated at the Houston station. It wouldn't work in the turnstile to get out of Houston station. And then after that, they got a bill from Irish Rail um, for a €1,000 for using, for taking travel and not having the correct ticket. So far, so good. But then it raised the, the data protection issues, which the, correspond the person I dealt with during the summer told me they'd already raised with the data protection commissioner. And the issue is, how did Erin O'Dearn get her, the, the individual's name and address? There's no dispute about the amount that happened, but it was the data protection issue. So, um, arising from a meeting last week, and people do follow it, um, I've received an email, and the CNAG has received the same email from a person last week. Um, we received this last Friday. And this, this is very interesting about the use of the public service card that I hadn't really thought about up until now, and if it's happening, we ne really need it clarified. So this person used their public service card, and on the public service card, you have a photo and your PPS number is on the back and you sign it, and it's valid until whatever date, and on the front of it, for, there's an FT for free travel, and sometimes there's plus S, can be plus the spouse. That's just printed on the front of the card. So this individual used a card um, on the Lewis here in Dublin and on one of the major bus companies in Dublin now, not Dublin Bus. And when they go through the ticketing machine, it says recorded. So he got curious as to know what was being recorded, because he was flashing his public service card um, to um, private transport companies. And he eventually tracked it down and got a letter back from the National Transport Authority, because the bus operator in Lewis said nothing to do with us, contact the National Transport Authority. So this person has got this reply back from the National Transport Authority. And we've received a copy of this letter in recent days. So what, there's, what, the, what the National Transport Authority is saying is that when the person uses the card, none of the person's information on the card is recorded. But every card has a number that the transport companies have. So it's not your PPS number, so that they can go back and say, um, um, when they're claiming possibly payment, I know there's lump sum grants, but maybe you know there and it's slightly different. So they have the no a number, and it records all the trips and journeys yeah. that the person took. The rail company doesn't have the name and address and the details of the person, but they have a number when they send it back to social protection. Social protection can match it up with their PPS, so um, with a public service card. So they, 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 they are saying uh, only the department of, this is from um, the National Transport Authority, only the Department of Employment and Social Protection, which knows the PPS card has been assigned, which number, uh, the individual anonymous number that the, the transport company has. The, the department does not provide this information to anyone. So far as the public transport is concerned, all we know is that the PPS card number, you know, the anonymous number, uh, has been used, but not who use it, nor do we know anything about the person using the card. It's entirely anonymous. Then the, letter, the email goes on to say, when the public service card is presented to the ticket machine, the ticketing machine records that a journey has been taken and assigns fair foregone value to the record, and that is stored in the ticket machine. The records are held by, the records held are the operator, that's the name of the transport company, the ID, the number on the card, um, the date and time of the journey, and the route number, and the fair foregone, which is the adult single fare. And the data is then uploaded to the back office system and subsequently made available to the Department of Employment and Social Protection. The purpose of recording this information is so that the transport operator can record overall passenger numbers and overall usage and also be able to make a claim for reimbursement from the Department in respect of services and delivered to free travel pass holders. So it appears to me that when the information goes back to the travel company, um, the Department of Social Protection now has details of the 900,000 people, every state pensioner in the country, of every time to use public transport in terms of every trip to took, every time journey to took. So the allegation of this is he didn't know the state had such mass surveillance systems in place. 
And if there is that level, I don't think people knew that your DESP card and the Department of Social, Rec um, Social Protection um, could be able to obtain every time and every journey and every trip you took. I can see maybe from a financial position why, but I can see from a data protection point of view, I don't think that people were aware that that's the case. So I think we we'll just write to the, the, the Department of Employment and Social Protection just to clarify all these, that, that particular issue. Do they have a record of all the travel the taken? The NTA next week as well. Pardon? The NTA are in next week. Yeah. So, and I know it's budget week, but I, can, I assume the Department has a lot of staff and the people dealing with data protection are not the ones involved in whether or not who gets an increase next week or if there is any increase. So somebody should, should be able to give us an information note in advance of next week's meeting so we can raise this with the National Transport Authority. Is that agreed? Yeah. It and bit, and certainly of, raises issues. Yeah, I, it's raising I, I, a big issue. Something in the back of my head is, is telling me though that there was provision made somewhere there in relation to this, but I, I'm not certain on yeah, that. Yeah, and it does say the card is for identification and use of public services, so this is a service. But we didn't know what, and how long are they holding the details of everybody's travel and every time they stepped on a bus or on a train? I don't know. So we need... You need the question of Orga. They're the golden questions that have yeah. never been put. Mm. Yeah, so we're now asking the questions. So... Um, we need that information, and the public needs that information. Yeah. Uh, well, Seamus, did you the want to comment? The, yeah, just um, the NTA are obviously the controllers of the, the system, yes. so they should be able to explain to us who they provide information to, what the nature of it is, and what the purpose of it is. Okay, well, uh, I mean, my interest in it primarily is in relation to control yeah. of public expenditure. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, um, it, we'd want to ensure that a system is operating the way it was designed to operate and within the law. There's one particular aspect as well. The, 